After pledging to run all the way until the convention, Tulsi Gabbard has decided to drop out and endorse Joe Biden over Bernie Sanders. She put out this video today. Now, after Tuesday's election, it's clear that Democratic primary voters have chosen Vice President Joe Biden to be the person who will take on President Trump in the general election. I know Vice President Biden and his wife, and I'm grateful to have called his son, Bo, a friend who also served in the National Guard. Now, although I may not agree with the Vice President on every issue, I know that he has a good heart and he's motivated by his love for our country and the American people. I'm confident that he will lead our country guided by the spirit of aloha, respect and compassion, and thus help heal the divisiveness that has been tearing our country apart. So today I'm suspending my presidential campaign and offering my full support to Vice President Joe Biden in his quest to bring our country together. Yeah, so we'll talk about my thoughts on this in a moment, but first I want to show you the response. Joe Biden actually did acknowledge her endorsement, tweeting out, Tulsi Gabbard has put her life on the line in service of this country and continues to serve with honor today. I'm grateful to have her support and look forward to working with her to restore honor and decency to the White House. And on top of that, she uh, got the approval of Neera Tanden, surprisingly, who tweeted, In this moment of national crisis, Tulsi Gabbard meets it and works to unite the party endorsing Joe Biden. I've been tough on some of her past positions, but grateful for her leadership here. So my first response is, um, I'm wondering what the rest of the people who claimed that she was a Russian asset will say now, namely Hillary Clinton. Um, they said that she would run third party and here she is falling in line like a good little soldier and endorsing Joe Biden. Now, here's the thing. This absolutely, without question, undermines her credibility. I don't know what else to say. Like, I really started to grow disillusioned with Tulsi Gabbard a couple of months into her campaign, namely by summer of 2019, because she started to do things that I just, I don't agree with. It, you know, it wasn't just her moving away from Medicare for All. It was the BDS vote. It was the rhetoric that she was using on the campaign trail. I just kind of got turned off by it. But this here, if you weren't turned off by everything else, then how could you not be turned off by this? Her entire platform was to just run on this unapologetic anti-war platform. And she could have dropped out and endorsed Bernie Sanders and helped an anti-war candidate who had a chance get elected, but instead, she chose to keep running. And you know what? It, like, if she wanted to stay in until the convention, that's her choice. But the writing was on the wall. It seemed clear that she had no path to the nomination on Super Tuesday 2 and 3. She was losing to people who had already dropped out. So really, in that situation, you have to make a choice. You have to realize, what do I want to do? Do I really care about these policies that I'm pushing? And am I willing to see the reality? Am I willing to read the writing that's on the wall? If she dropped out and endorsed Bernie Sanders, like she did in 2016, which I appreciate... I think that that would have proven that she's principled and she cares, but she chose at a time when there are still two candidates left to endorse the one who is not anti-war. She endorsed Joe Biden, who voted for the Iraq war that she served in. Yeah, so when we were, you know, seeing her take these questions about Joe Biden's vote for the Iraq war, and she kind of just brushed them aside and said, well, you know, he made a mistake. This is why she was probably planning this for quite some time. And that's uh, that's really disappointing. That's really disappointing. But to me, it's not surprising. But I absolutely do feel bad for Tulsi Gabbard's supporters. Um, and I've clashed with them because I've been critical of Tulsi Gabbard. But anytime I see people who truly believe in a candidate get their hearts broken, it, it does suck. It does suck. And it's happening to us right now, right? Bernie Sanders supporters, uh, Tulsi Gabbard supporters, Andrew Yang supporters, even Marianne Williamson supporters, Mike Gravel supporters. We all got beat by the establishment. All of us did. So it sucks to see so many candidates fall in line. And I'll keep it real. If Bernie Sanders drops out, I hope he stays in longer. But if he does drop out, I know he will endorse Joe Biden. And I think that's a horrible decision. Don't endorse Joe Biden. He stands for nothing. He's not going to get my vote. It just, look, this is what I want people to take away from this video. Um, we have to realize that political leaders 
at some point in time, they're most likely going to let us down. But we have to realize that we are the ones that have to keep fighting. We can't let people running for president or running for Congress divide us because at the end of the day, all of the anti-establishment people, we are a block, right? And we have policies that we care deeply about, hence why we support specific candidates. If you supported Tulsi Gabbard, being anti-war is probably your number one issue. If you support Bernie Sanders, Medicare for All is probably your number one issue. If you support Andrew Yang, obviously UBI is your number one issue. So I do think that people need to realize that all of these squabbles that happened during the primary, you have to try to put that aside and work with these people um, who are anti-establishment. Because look what just happened throughout the course of the 2020 primaries. The establishment came together and absolutely steamrolled us. That's what happened. So going forward, we have to try to be a unified front and take on the establishment and really be cognizant and mindful of all of these policies that we all want to see. No more wars. Universal basic income. Medicare for all. And let me just say this because a lot of people were disappointed by my coverage of Tulsi Gabbard because I was seen as overly critical. Now, I actually went through all of the videos that I posted after she announced her run for the president, and I was actually overwhelmingly positive, but people thought that I was a little bit too unfair to Tulsi Gabbard, and that my critiques of her were in bad faith. But now, like, there's nothing to lose. Like, Bernie is losing, Tulsi's out, Yang's out, so there's nothing to lose, so I have nothing to gain by lying. My criticisms of Tulsi Gabbard were all in good faith. My criticisms of her were based specifically on policy. And I knew that, you know, criticizing someone who's popular online, like Tulsi Gabbard, even Andrew Yang, that is going to be something that gets me criticism. But I can't, I can't lie. I have to be objective. And even if I think that doing something might get me hate online, I have to be truthful because when I see red flags, I have to call them out. Like I learned from experience with Obama, right? I ignored the writing on the wall with him. I ignored the red flags and I got devastated by that. I was incredibly disappointed. So I try to help people, you know, understand what these moves are, why you have to read a little bit more into the language that politicians use because oftentimes they use doublespeak. And, you know, some people don't see it that way. A lot of people thought that I was being overly critical. But it wasn't like I was just trying to tear down candidates like Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang at the behest of Bernie Sanders. I was trying to be objective, even if people don't think that that's what I was trying to do. I have my criticisms of Bernie Sanders as well. But I just wanted to make sure that we push the Overton window as far left as we possibly could. Um... And so it, it sucks. And look, I'll, I'll just say this. Marianne Williamson was also criticized uh, by me because she backed away from Medicare for all. And now she's kind of the only one who showed she's principled by endorsing Bernie Sanders over Joe Biden. Although I can't really support her in the future if she doesn't back Medicare for all, because like you, I have standards. I have standards, right? So it's not like I'm trying to tear these candidates down because I want to boost Bernie Sanders. I support the person who I think is the best. This may be subjective, but this is my view. And just to like show you, like I donated to all of the anti-establishment candidates from the get-go because even if I knew I would support Bernie because I agreed with him on more issues, I like I wanted the left and the anti-establishment candidates to monopolize this course. I bought a uh, Andrew Yang button. I bought a Tulsi Gabbard button. Um, I bought their shirts. I bought the uh, Yang shirt, which is actually very comfortable material, by the way. Um, I bought the Tulsi Gabbard shirt. Like, I genuinely wanted to support these candidates, even if I wasn't going to vote for them. Because, like, with Tulsi Gabbard, I mean, it's like, well, you endorsed Bernie in 2016. Um, let me help you out by donating to you and buying a shirt, you know, just to give you a boost. Andrew Yang supports UBI. So do I. I don't necessarily agree with his implementation of UBI. I want it to stack on top of existing social safety net programs, but just the fact that you're getting this conversation out there is important. You know, here's a couple bucks. Let me buy a pin and a shirt. Um, and, and this is something I shouldn't admit. I'm actually embarrassed about this, and I was reluctant to do, do this, but I did. I bought a set of three Warren pins at the very beginning, and um, I bought a Warren shirt. I bought a Warren shirt too. So the good news is that during, you know, social distancing and self-quarantine, with this toilet paper shortage, if I do run out of toilet paper, I've got a lot of toilet paper right there. And the Warren one will be the first that I wipe my ass with. 
<laughs> but like the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want people to understand that um, when I criticize candidates, I am doing it because I genuinely want them to do better. And that's why, you know, after I did my initial video criticizing Tulsi Gabbard in January or February, I can't remember when, um, you know, um, I was I was pleased to see her reach out, you know, and want to come on my program. Now, eventually, I submitted questions to her campaign, or not necessarily questions, but I, I gave them the topics when they asked about what I wanted to ask them. And they clearly, you know, they didn't, there were some subjects that were untouchable that they didn't want me to press them on. So maybe that's why, you know, um, that fell through. I don't, I don't know what it is, but like, for me, I was genuinely trying to criticize her to make her a better candidate and to just educate people about her, you know, positions and what I thought she was doing right, what I thought she was doing wrong. Now, the thing is that like, after she endorsed Bernie in 2016, I just automatically supported her because I thought, look, you support Medicare for all. You co-sponsored the bill. You didn't do it before. But I mean, you're on board now. So I was desperate for someone to be the next leader of the progressive movement. I am now. Right. Because Bernie Sanders is old. He's not going to run for president again. So we need a successor. Right. So, I mean, back in 2016, 2017, I was hoping that it would be Tulsi Gabbard. She showed up to Standing Rock. Right. And as much as I disagree with her, I don't think she did us as dirty as Warren at all. Even though she's endorsing Joe Biden now, she still didn't criticize Bernie Sanders. You know, uh, Elizabeth Warren has been attacking him and us. So she she's not like Warren level traitor to me. I'm, I'm disappointed in her endorsement. But what I'm trying to say is that like you can support candidates as political allies. But once they start running for higher office, I do think it's our responsibility to vet these candidates. And as I, you know, did my research on Tulsi Gabbard, I just thought she wasn't as strong as I had initially hoped. And sure, there was some cognitive dissonance. I didn't want to believe everything. And what I tried to do in that initial video when I kind of went, went through all of my disagreements with Tulsi Gabbard is there was a thread on Reddit that kind of responded to all of what they called were smears. And I basically, anything that I disagreed with her on, I tried to debunk it and, and find, just so I could be extra courteous to her. And what was left in that video that I posted was just what I genuinely disagreed with her on and things that were open questions that I wanted her to answer. And we didn't get answers to a lot of the questions that I had. But I mean, people supported her overall because she did prioritize anti-war. And that's fine. Like, you can support whoever you want. Your support is not owed to Bernie Sanders. But you do have to acknowledge that there are other people who just disagree, right? I disagree. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I tried to tear down Tulsi Gabbard in, you know, stating where I disagreed with her. I think in some ways she brought good things to the table, but overall, I don't think she ran a good campaign. I think she ran a very poor campaign. Um, and that's not me saying that because I'm disappointed that she didn't endorse Bernie Sanders. It's me saying that because objectively speaking, I think that during a Democratic Party primary, you do have to court the left. You have to try. And, you know, if you don't do that, especially if your base is kind of anti-establishment, anti-war Bernie Sanders supporters, then, you know, you could lose some support. I think a lot of you know, people who supported her were previous Bernie Sanders supporters, you know, so um, I, I, I don't think that she chose the correct lane this time around. Um, with Andrew Yang, I actually do think that he ran a good campaign. And Tulsi Gabbard is young, Andrew Yang is young. So if they ever want to come back, I'm sure that they can. I'm sure that they will run for president again. But just for me, personally speaking, now that 2020 is over, I absolutely refuse to support anyone that doesn't support Medicare for all. And I lose respect for anti-establishment candidates if you, uh, you know, fall in line like a good little soldier and back the establishment's choice. I respected Andrew Yang's decision to withhold an endorsement until someone in the race endorsed UBI. But he still endorsed Biden. And in fact, I think Tulsi Gabbard actually endorsed UBI. She picked up the mantle after Yang dropped out and he didn't endorse her. So like I would have respected if he just withheld an endorsement until the convention when it was officially over. Right. But he didn't. I would have respected if Tulsi Gabbard didn't endorse anyone. And she just ran into the convention, even though that doesn't I mean, she doesn't have a path. Right. But if she is doing that, then clearly she's not going to endorse anyone. But I mean, she chose to fall in line this time around. She didn't last time. And I will always appreciate that. Even if I don't I don't know what her intentions were, I never will. You know, we can't read people. You just have to take them at their word. Or we can't uh, read people exactly, you know. But I, what I'm trying to say is, look, 
in the future, these candidates will come back. And it sucks that she gave up her seat for a failed presidential run that ultimately led to her being um, less popular among a lot of progressives. But, you know, if she wants to come back in the future, and this goes for Andrew Yang and Marianne Williamson as well, people who I expect to see in the future, you have to really listen carefully to the left, listen to socialists, even if you're not socialist, and understand that there are some things that are just non-negotiable, right? Um, Medicare for all is one of them. The minute that you start to equivocate on Medicare for all, I can't support you. And as pleased as I am, as I alluded to, that Marianne Williamson endorsed Bernie, if she doesn't back Medicare for all in 2024, 2028, or for a congressional run, I can't get behind her because I just, I refuse to fall in line and support this disgusting, murderous capitalist system. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I refuse to fall in line. You can't control me. I am my own person. And if you don't represent me, if you don't want to represent me, I won't vote for you. It's as simple as that. And I think that we are at a time where we have to demand and expect more from politicians, all of them, including Bernie Sanders. Like, we should have been maybe more vocal about the need for him to be more aggressive. And I just, I just think he doesn't have it in him at this point. Um, I, I don't, I don't think he does, but I mean, we have to, we have to be very vocal and you can't basically be overly critical of a politician. I believe that certainly we don't want to be too cynical. We don't want to try to drag them, you know, because we need allies. But at the same time, if you want to represent us, then you've got to acknowledge that we have very, very high standards. And if you don't live up to those standards, then we will call you out. It doesn't mean that we have to agree on 100% of the issues, but we will call you out. So, you know, let me end with this. To all of the Tulsi Gabbard supporters, I'm sorry that we all kind of butted heads, you know, and it, it sucks that the Yang gang and Bernie bros and, you know, Tulsi supporters butted heads at times during this primary. Same with Marianne Williamson supporters. I criticized her too. But like at the end of the day, you've got to understand that it's all of us against the establishment, all of us against the establishment. So if we can somehow come back together and acknowledge what a behemoth the establishment is, then I think that we will have a chance in the future. And I don't know if there's going to be one candidate who we can all collectively rally around. I don't know if that's going to be the case. But what I do know is that if you are anti-establishment, acknowledge that people on your side may disagree with you, but they're still your allies. It doesn't mean that, you know, they should be hated. Now, the same is not true for Elizabeth Warren. Um, I absolutely am done with Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I think that she has burned that bridge permanently, and I was absolutely wrong and laughably naive to try to give her a second chance in 2020. And it's not like I was going to vote for her, but I just, you know, I was willing to hear her out. But um, that, I'm burnt on that. But when it comes to the other anti-establishment candidates, I can't imagine myself supporting Tulsi Gabbard. Um, I could see myself supporting Marianne Williamson if she embraced Medicare for all. I like what she says about foreign policy, um, U.S. policy in Latin America. I can maybe see myself supporting Andrew Yang if he moves away from the libertarian things, like if he embraces actual single-payer Medicare for all and not a public option or whatever it was that he was supporting, if he tweaks his UBI program a little bit more to stack on top of our existing social safety net, I can, you know, support him. But if these candidates come back and I criticize them, understand that it's coming from a place of love and wanting to just have a better future for America. And I'll leave that there. I kind of feel like I've been rambling here, but um, I didn't expect to make this video today. This is kind of unexpected that she dropped out, um, but it's not too surprising that she endorsed Biden. So um, yeah, it's disappointing. Um, Tulsi Gabbard, unfortunately, she kind of went down in my book. I shouldn't say kind of. She substantially went down in my book running for president. But going forward in the future, whatever she does, because she's not going to return to Congress, I hope that she is going to fight for what's best for the country. You know, I don't agree that Joe Biden has the spirit of aloha. He's a terrible human being who would veto Medicare for all and let thousands of Americans die every single year. So I don't agree with her here. Maybe I'll never agree with her. You know, maybe she's just not a political ally like I thought she was. But just acknowledge that if you are a Tulsi supporter 
and um, you're genuinely anti-war, then if there's another candidate that comes along in the future who is anti-war, I think that we should put all of this that happened in 2020 behind us because we all got beat by the establishment. We all lost. And now we have to just figure out how to go forward. The establishment is unified, so we should somehow find a way to come together as well. So I'll leave that there.